Hello everyone and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics and much much more. My name is Sava and today we are continuing our journey through the world of mathematical statistics and stock return modeling. And today we are going to investigate one of the most sophisticated yet still relatively simple to model theoretical distribution functions. That is called, well, that is known by many names. Sometimes it's called generalized normal distribution. Sometimes it's called the error distribution. Well, whenever you find one of those names, you know what they're talking about. This is the distribution that has in its idea the logic that the well-known normal distribution, the bell curve, the Gaussian distribution, or however you might want to call it, is just a particular case of a wider and uh, more diverse families of distributions that can actually provide and fit reasonably well for all kinds of real-world data. So, is it true for S&P 500, our favorite guinea pig that we have used previously to fit so many other theoretical distributions? Well, it's our job today to figure that out. Well, in terms of the mathematical representation of the generalized normal distribution function, it can seem a little bit overwhelming at first. First of all, it has not one, not two, but three different parameters that shape what the distribution is like. It has a location parameter, M, a scale parameter, A, and uh, a shape parameter B. And they all go into this distribution function in many different ways. So first of all, uh, we have this uh, distribution function being symmetric around one half. So it takes one half and then adds uh, this uh, large function that has some interesting notations inside that I'm gonna cover very, very shortly and multiplies it by the sign of the um, function x minus m. So if your observation is right of center, you add something to one half. If it's less than uh, the center, if it's left of center, you subtract the same value. Well, that provides for the fact that the generalized normal distribution retains this property of the normal distribution that it's symmetric. It has the skewness of zero. But how does it vary from the original normal distribution? Well, um, it allows for varying courtesies, varying uh, heaviness of tails. And uh, what we saw multiple times with other distribution functions is that courtesies is the place, the decisive role in terms of whether some theoretical distribution is going to fit our data or not. So here, uh, the parameters A and B allow us to provide a function that would generate any value of access courtesies that we would like of it. And here we see how the uh, parameter B in particular uh, actually gives us any uh, value for access courtesies that we like. And uh, here the function that uh, you encounter in these formulas a lot is this capital gamma. This is the gamma function, and you might have encountered it previously um, as the uh, generalization of factorial to all real numbers or possibly even complex numbers, but let's not go into that much detail. Well, uh, you can see that this logic of the generalization of the factorial is actually true for the gamma function. Uh, well, we all know what a factorial is for the whole numbers. Well, it is defined as the product of all um, integers that are equal to or lower than the argument of the factorial function. So, for example, if we take 3, then the factorial of 3 is going to be 1 times 2 times 3 is going to be 6. If you take 4, then that's going to be the factorial of 3 times 4 and it's going to be 24. Well, the gamma function um, is just the generalization of it to all 
real numbers with one um, meaningful um, caveat that if we take, for example, the gamma function of 4, it will give us not 24, but 6, because the gamma for a whole number is equal to the factorial of this real number minus 1. So to get a factorial of uh, 4, for example, you would need to get gamma of 4 plus 1, and then it will give you exactly 24, the factorial of 4. So uh, given this um, small uh, reminder of what factorials uh, are and how gamma function uh, generalizes uh, the factorial to all real numbers, we can already understand how the B uh, shape parameter uh, specifies the courtesies. So uh, if we assume that our parameter B is equal to some number, for example, 3, so uh, we can figure out what would be the value of the excess courtesies for the generalized normal distribution with a shape parameter B equal to 3. To do that, we'll just need to enforce this formula. So in the numerator, we'll have the gamma function of 5 divided by B times the gamma function of 1 divided by B. Then in the denominator, we will have gamma of 3 divided by B, and we'll need to square that. And then uh, we'll need to subtract 3 from this ratio and see that the value of the access courtesies for such a, a distribution, such a generalized normal distribution function, would actually be negative. So it means that if our shape parameter is 3, then the resulting distribution will have flatter tails than the uh, regular bell curve, than the regular Gaussian curve. So if we change this parameter to be equal to 2, we'll exactly get the regular normal distribution. We'll get the excess courtesies of 0. And if B decreases further, uh, below 2, so for example it will equal to 1, then our excess courtesies will be higher. So that's how, by varying b, we can get any value of the excess courtesies uh, as we want. And in our case, we want to use the method of moments to calibrate the distribution parameters so that our theoretical distribution function has the best fit possible to our empirical distribution, so we would want this courtesies to be exactly the same, or at least very close to, the courtesies that we actually observe in our data. So if we measure the courtesies using the cut function of our data, we'll get 3.83. And now we need to calibrate B to match our empirical courtesies uh, with our theoretical courtesies. That, again, uh, is generated only by varying the parameter beta. So, first of all, we can figure out what is the difference between our empirical courtesies and our theoretical courtesies. And in our case, it's easy to understand that it's 0 0.83, so our courtesies is actually lower than what we want to get. So it means that our B parameter should be lower than what we uh, assumed it to be at 1 currently. To get our B easily using the method of moments, so uh, match uh, the parameters of the distribution to get the best fit possible, we can use the solver tool in Excel and just set this difference to be equal to 1 and uh, change the cell with the parameter B. So Excel will investigate a lot of potential values for the B parameter and set it to be equal to whatever is the value of B that gives you exactly the same value of access courtesies as the empirical distribution. Now we can click solve and see that our desired value of B in this case is 0 0.92. So we are actually having much fatter tails than the normal distribution. Then uh, for the uh, calibration of the scale parameter A, 
we can look at the variance uh, formula and uh, again use the method of moments to estimate it using the sample variance and using the parameter b that we have already discovered. If variance is equal to a squared times gamma of 3 over b divided by gamma of 1 over b, then a squared would be equal to variance times this divided by this. So it means that a would be the square root of sample variance, so standard deviation squared, times the gamma of 1 divided by b and divided by gamma of 3 divided by b. So our a, the scale parameter, will be 0.51%. And uh, our m, so our location parameter, will be just the sample median. Again, to reflect the fact that the distribution function has skewness 0 and is symmetric around the 1 half, around the center point. Now we have all we need to actually uh, estimate the generalized normal distribution function for our data. But one final problem is what is this small gamma function over here? Well, this notation is used to uh, signify the lower incomplete gamma function, which is actually the integral of the gamma function uh, over particular domains. Uh, to estimate it uh, very efficiently using the tools of Excel, you just need to know that this expression, lower and complete gamma function divided by the gamma function itself, is what you call a gamma distribution. So I have rewritten this formula over here using the gamma distribution. So we will use this to input our uh, formula, our function, into Excel. So, without further ado, over here, let's start with the simple bit. So, 1 over half plus 1 over half times the sine of rank return minus m, which is, as we already figured out, the sample median and lock the row, times the gamma distribution. So, here for x, we need to input this bit over here that contains x in it. So we'll need to input, uh, first of all, we'll need to input uh, the absolute value of ranked return minus the sample median, m, Then we'll need to divide it by the scale parameter a, and again we'll lock that. And here, need to raise it to the power of the shape parameter b, and lock the row as well. Now, for alpha, well, alpha is the first parameter over here, so we'll need to specify it to be equal to 1 divided by b. Beta, we need to leave it be and just leave it as 1, and we need the cumulative distribution as this is used to kind of scale the gamma distribution into the generalized normal distribution, so we need to input 1, or true, over here. And that's all we need for our generalized normal distribution. And hopefully it will work if we press Enter and drag this around. So now we can bottom right click it all the way down, and see, actually, how miraculously well the generalized normal distribution function fits the empirical data, especially around the left tail, where those two values are remarkably close. And even at the right tail, the fit is actually very decent. If we look at the graphical representation of the two, we can see that there are some deviations here and there, but overall, the fit is actually very, very impressive throughout, uh, from the very extreme negative events to the very extreme positive events. As we can see, the gray line, the generalized normal cumulative distribution function, does 
at almost coincide with the empirical cumulative distribution function almost in all um, places. So the overall lesson is that sometimes to get the best fit possible, you have to look for mathematically complex but still tolerable solutions that are generalizations of well-known concepts that we all have learned long, long time ago. The generalized normal distribution or the error distribution dwells on the simple concept of the bell curve, but it leaves the bell curve as the particular case and uh, relaxes some of the some of the assumptions the normal distribution has to get a better fit for real world data. And uh, here we have it. For some uh, empirical distributions, uh, the generalized normal distribution will produce remarkably good fits. For some of them, the Laplace distribution will be the best. And for some of the most extreme cases, you can always resort to the Cauchy distribution. That is by no means the end of the series of videos regarding uh, some theoretical uh, distributions from mathematical statistics, but it's a good place to put a comma in our discussion. And now, more than ever, I would really love to hear from you. Any feedback you want to put in the comments below, any suggestions for further videos, any topics on uh, other concepts from business economics or finance, I would be more than glad to cover them in future videos. And please don't forget to leave a like under this video and subscribe to our channel. As for now, thank you very much and stay tuned.